how's it going everybody? So today we're going to be trying out a new resin. We're going to be learning a few new things about Paduo resin. You might have seen it on Amazon. There's only like so many that you can find on Amazon. So I just picked one and this one was a decent price and I liked the packaging. That's honestly what decided it for me. But I am going to go through more in the future because even though this worked probably better than all the other resins that I've used so far, I still had an allergic reaction to it. I'm really sensitive to epoxies and that's really unfortunate. So you can kind of see on my arm it's a little bit blotchy there and there and on my wrist that's just the reaction and it's really itchy but if you scratch it it'll just spread so practicing mindfulness I want to know how it compares to art resin because that's another epoxy resin I've tried and then on the general I use a polyester resin casting craft so I've been getting a question kind of consistently on how to dehydrate what I use in my resin so I wanted to answer that in this video, just in case anybody asks in the future, I can just reference this. So I'm gonna be dehydrating a bunch of different citruses. Um, I have oranges, clementines, lemons, and the really exciting one, grapefruit. We're gonna be slicing up a nice juicy red grapefruit and seeing what that looks like after I dehydrate it. I'm also gonna be making some bookmarks because since they're so thin, it's really easy to test the flexibility and how hard they actually cure and how long it takes them to harden fully. I also showed you guys in the last video that I found a bunch of mushrooms, so I'm going to definitely be using some of those and I can't wait to use them again and again because I ended up getting actually so many. I almost filled like a large mason jar with them, so let me just show you that right now because Look at all these beautiful mushrooms that we got. So many different colors. Look how big they are. There's a bunch of clusters that we found. They're so nice. So I go get the trays to my dehydrator, which are stackable, so I have plenty of room to layer out all the slices that I need. I try to make them as thin as possible, just so I would have a large quantity but when they're a little bit thicker, they're less transparent and they're more vibrant, I find, so I really didn't mind to have a variety. I'm not that good at slicing them very thin anyways, and plan to check on them periodically to take out the thinner slices because, of course, they will dehydrate first and the thicker ones will take a little bit more time. I've never tried dehydrating grapefruit before and it's definitely the largest fruit that I've ever tried to do and I'm not sure what will happen because I've noticed different fruit have different reactions. For example, this lemon, the insides often turn very brown, very dark. They don't stay this light, pretty yellow. Oranges are much better at staying vibrant, but everything reacts differently so I was really curious on what would happen with this grapefruit. So I leave the fruit in the dehydrator at 130 degrees Fahrenheit for about 48 hours and this is how they look after that time. They're not done yet. I did take out a couple slices but they needed to be in for another 24 hours at least. But I'm pretty excited on how vibrant they are at this point. Here's what I collected of acorns, mushrooms, ferns, just random stuff that I found in a forest a little bit north of where I live in Ontario. I leave them in silica gel for about a week and hope things don't shrivel up or lose too much color in the meantime. But as I pull these out, they turn out perfectly. They're a lot more durable than they used to be when they were fresh. And this is really good because that means I can keep them in a mason jar and not worry too much about them all breaking. I am so excited with all the colors. We have a lot of yellow, red, and orange. Such strong, intense colors. The star of the show are any clusters of mushrooms that I found that stayed intact. I always got so excited when I found some of those. Doing resin and collecting from nature has opened my eyes up so much to what's surrounding me, what you can find in certain areas. I can never find any mushrooms around where I live right now, but when I went up north a bit, near a lake, there were tons of mushrooms, tons of varieties, and just really different cool stuff. A lot of different ferns, a lot of different smaller plants that have really interesting textures. So this just really encourages me to go searching for what I don't expect.
here I separate what I've found into two mason jars. One just a generic plants and colorful stuff, and the other one solely mushrooms. So I finally get to start working with the resin. The first step the instructions told me to do was leave them in a hot water bath for about 5 minutes. I left them in there for about 15 minutes and made sure the resin was really liquidous before I started stirring them together. So the ratio for this resin is just 50-50 and I started with kind of a smaller amount just to layer the molds with a little bit of resin to make sure that we have a perfectly crystal clear thinner layer at the top. Make sure to take out any of those air bubbles and I'm just working really slowly since this is a new resin for me. I stir for about a minute or two just until this cloudy silvery look turns completely clear but also stirring very slowly to not create any more air bubbles. I'm really happy with how thin this resin is. It's almost like water. I think it was a really good idea to heat it up for as long as I did because hardly any bubbles are forming at this point. I start with dipping in some mushrooms, some ferns, some acorns, little bit of neutral flowers just to fill it up a little bit more but not take too much attention away from the stars which is the beautiful mushrooms that we put in. I put in a red mushroom and a yellow mushroom and I try to position it so you can see underneath the mushroom because I think that's also really beautiful. I continue to add a third layer of resin in the sphere mold just to seal everything up and hopefully this is my last layer and then I also move on to putting a slice of grapefruit in the other half sphere that I'm working on. The grapefruit didn't turn out as pink or red that I wanted, it turned out very orange and you could almost confuse it with just an orange slice. Then I start to work on the fruit and flower bookmarks that I wanted to try out. So for this, I'm just organizing my flowers a little bit. I definitely want to put some fern in there because I think it's really pretty. I want to just mix in a bunch of random flowers that I found on this trip. And in the other bookmark, I wanted to put smaller cut up slices of oranges and lemons. This is where it's important to have really thin slices. I tried to find the thinnest ones that I had, but they still weren't that perfect. The thinner they are, the fewer layers you have to do in the bookmarks. And for these ones, for the orange one especially, I had to do like three or four layers to make sure they were adequately covered. And there are still some little bumps on the back. So for next time, I'm gonna try to do really paper thin slices because I think that could look really amazing anyways. I leave everything for at least 24 hours to set. Padua resin says it's a fast curing resin and I did notice it curing in a little bit weird way. I was checking on it throughout the day. I noticed that the center was curing really fast and then the sides were kind of still jelly. So that was fine, but it was a really good idea for me to keep an eye on it because bubbles would form all the time and rise to the top. And since the sides weren't curing as fast as the middle, it would push all the air bubbles to the side and it would require a little bit more filling as well as attention with a popsicle stick to make sure I'm popping them every every 10 minutes or so until the bottom of the piece is cured enough for bubbles to stop rising. For the excess resin on these pieces, I decided to use some scissors to just trim it off, but to make it absolutely perfect, I went back with my Dremel to make sure it was all smooth with no sharp edges. I was really excited to unmold them because the feeling of the resin was so smooth and hard and really nice quality. There were no blemishes. When I use my polyester resin, there's a high shrinking rate, so there's often blemishes and requires a top coat. These did not require a top coat at all. I used really shiny molds, so they turned out almost perfectly. When I took out the grapefruit, it had a lot of air bubbles on the top of it. These were larger air bubbles and not like micro bubbles, so I was really okay with it. I thought it looked really pretty and gave it this underwater look. I drilled holes into the bookmarks for tassels that I wanted to add in the future. I don't have any right now, so I didn't add them yet. And the mushroom sphere turned out so beautifully. I love how simple it is. The most 
intriguing part of it is how the bottom of the resin reflects what's in the piece. So you can see all around the mushrooms. I love how it mirrored it so well. So try to ignore the traffic behind me. I'm gonna try to speak quickly through bursts of silence, but I'm right by a highway, so loud vehicles happen. I feel like that's a common theme in my video, so why not keep it consistent? All I wanted to do is talk about these resin things. So nice. They're so smooth. They turned out with hardly any bubbles. That's a lie. There are some bubbles, that, especially in this one, but there are no like micro little air bubbles that are really distracting and look kind of blurry and like not good at all. These ones are larger bubbles that kind of give it an underwatery effect, which a lot of people also don't like that, but I think it's so pretty because my normal resin doesn't do stuff like that. So I think it's really special and pretty. The grapefruit stayed so vibrant. You kind of can't really even tell that it's a grapefruit versus an orange. If you had them side by side, you definitely would be able to tell because an orange turns out a lot paler, a lot softer of an orange. This is a really deep, intense color that you can only get with grapefruit, I think. And then these mushrooms turned out really, really nice too. One thing that I didn't do with this resin, which I'm not sure why, because I use, actually I do know why, because I was trying to work fast with it, but I usually dip every piece that I put in the resin before putting it in the piece itself. And since I didn't do that, you can kind of see little air bubbles on the acorns and on the mushroom and they're really small and just right against the surface of it. I don't mind the look. I think it actually handled it pretty well, but it could have been better if I do it again. But they turned out so smooth. They cured super duper hard. And I actually brought one of my bookmarks that I made with art resin and I wanted to compare it with the bookmark that I made this time with the Puduo resin. As you can see, I actually processed the art resin a lot more than I did the Padua resin. So when I poured the art resin, I let it sit in a hot water bath for a really long time. I torched it a few times. I used my heat gun to get rid of bubbles. I collected the bubbles with a popsicle stick to get rid of them. I did all those steps and we still got a lot of micro air bubbles. Still a lot of them right at the surface of the mold and it was really hard to get rid of this even in such a thin piece, which I was kind of surprised. And that's with warming it up, with paying a lot of attention to it, that's what happened. But then the Paduo resin is really, really clear. It's not absolutely perfect. Again, I didn't dip my pieces before putting them in the resin. It could have had something to do with it, but it's really, really clear without torching, without treating it with heat, so you're not risking your molds, damaging your molds. I just stirred really slowly, I poured really slowly, I just did it really carefully and that was enough. I did hot water bath because the instructions told me to, but the flexibility is similar, is similar. Um, but this one is slightly thicker and it's actually a little bit more bendy. Maybe because it's newer, this one I made a few weeks ago, but they're both bendy. They're both very bendy. I don't mind it. It's not damaging anything inside the resin. That is something about epoxies. They're very bendy, especially when they're in the sun. When they're heated up, they're super bendy. When you play with it after a while, if they're cold, they're less bendy. Makes sense, right? And this is the other bookmark that I made with the ferns and flowers. This one I made a little bit thicker, so it's a bit less bendy, but still pretty bendy. I don't hate it, I kinda like it, kinda love it actually. And will I buy this resin again? I think I will, yes, yes I will. Even though I'm allergic to it, I'm just gonna have to be really careful. And I think I prefer buying it in really smaller quantities. It's a little bit more expensive overall, but I'm not gonna do it as often since I'm kind of allergic to it. And I'm gonna keep trying different resin brands to figure out which one really works for me perfectly. But so far for the look, this is my favorite resin brand so far. I will definitely update you guys if yellowing happens, but I really doubt it. People are so good at making resin now and it hardly yellows anymore, unless it's those really cheap brands. You can see like a reflection on the bottom of the resin piece of what's inside of it. So it just makes it look like there's an endless dimension in there. Like you can see the top of the mushroom, 
but you can also see the bottom of it. You can see like the stem and underneath without even moving it. It's just stunning. I'm so excited to put these in my shop. I'm obsessed. I'm so excited to photograph these and get on with it because these are pretty and I want to do a sphere so bad. I was nervous to use art resin for spheres and larger things because I figured that it was just for really thin coats because of the crazy air bubbles. But with this resin, I think I could make some really, really pretty large pieces. I'm gonna leave a link to this resin down below if you guys wanna check it out yourselves. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Let me know in the comments if you guys have tried a resin that you know works really well that you want me to try out myself. I love a success story, so let me know. I'm definitely going to be looking into that myself and see what else I can find on Amazon. I've heard of a urethane resin that might not affect my allergies, so I might give that a shot. But this crystal clear epoxy quality is unmatched so far in what I've tried. So thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more resin stuff. And I'll see you in a few days with a new video.